and welcome to Tuesday Newsday, the only place you can get the entire week's worth of VR news in one place, so you can stay up to date with everything going on, of course mixed in with a couple gaffes. This week is June 25th, 2019. At the end of this video, I will have a new segment every week that I have a game lined up, and that segment is Indie Developer Spotlight. We're always constantly looking for that next big AAA game, and it's really easy for smaller developers to get lost under both the larger studios and other developers just pumping out crap. So as long as I have one that I'm interested in, every week I will spotlight an indie game that is worth your time. On to the news. First of course, we gotta talk about the HTC Vive Cosmos. Last week, HTC finally broke radio silence and revealed the spinning headset for two and a half minutes. No specs and really no other information other than what was revealed visually. Although we can expect more information on specs and whatnot later this week. This little reveal has a little more to it than expected, however. We can now see that there are now six tracking sensors on the Cosmos and a removable faceplate that is interestingly honeycombed. Well, turns out that I actually have just a teeny weeny bit of insider information on what this honeycomb faceplate may serve to do. I've seen a few up close pictures of the headset and here are a few things that I can confirm, at least from the HMD that I specifically saw. We've already seen this headset design change a couple of times, so changes are always still possible. If you stop here, you can see this little port when you take off the faceplate. There is actually a tiny fan in that spot, and of course it draws in air through the corresponding holes in the face of the headset. Now whether this fan is for the user's face or to keep the internals of the headset cooled, we don't know yet. But from what I've seen, the inside area of the headset near the lens does not appear to have any obvious vent holes to the face. But inherently, if the headset itself is cooler, you should generally have a more comfortable and less sweaty experience. In addition, I can confirm that there is a Vive Pro style display port on the left side of the headset and a USB-C port on the right side of the headset. And of course, the switch that actuates the flip mechanism. And that's right, this headset can flip up, I guess, to see your surroundings. Pass through work just fine for me, but it's possible that these sensors are not capable of video pass through, which could make sense. And on to the rest of the headset, clip on earphones, yes, and a halo head strap design, which we've already seen before. It's also confirmed to cost sub $900 US, sweet. I'm extremely interested and will certainly update you guys as we hear more about the Cosmos. In other news, the climb is now confirmed to be officially coming to the quest, soon. If you don't know what The Climb is, it's a game by Crytek that has you climb up mountains and go on a thrilling adventure. Yeah, this game will be awesome for the quest due to no tether, so if you're interested, certainly check it out. Meme Break! Do you have acne? Do you love VR? Well get yourself an Oculus Quest and wear it more often, because according to this quest review, both your virtual self and real self will feel better after using it. Works, five stars. This stuff is gold. I have adult acne and fine lines. It helps with both. After using it daily for two months, even though I've only had it for one, my face was clear. My pores are smaller and my overall complexion is nice. I now only use it every other night. Try it, it's worth every penny. Hey, if you get sucked into VR enough, the only mirror you'll ever have to look at is in VR chat anyways, right? Well, back to the news. Oculus Connect 6, otherwise known as OC6, the big conference where Oculus usually announces or shows off future projects, has had its dates announced. September 25th and 26th. But the interesting part is what they mentioned about the theme of the discussion this time around. Quote, This year we hope you'll join us to begin a new chapter of virtual and augmented reality. So Oculus is taking a step into AR, interesting, but in terms of VR, I wonder if they are teasing some new headset or project. If they are, that sucks a little bit for the people that just invested in the headsets that came out very recently. But if they are teasing a new PC VR headset, I just hope they're smart enough to manufacture it themselves this time. Also to premiere at OC6, Respawn, the devs behind Titanfall and Apex Legends, will finally reveal their VR FPS. I've come to really like this company and of course I'm excited about what they have to show off, but details are still scarce. Next, Swords of Gargantua, a medieval themed close quarter fighting game has been released on Steam VR, Oculus Store, and surprisingly the Oculus Quest. This is a pretty good looking game and looks like a lot of fun. I'll definitely have to be trying it out. I love seeing broad cross platform releases. 
Another game to be released soon is Defector. I have been excited about this game for a while, and the developers Twisted Pixel have announced this game will be dropping July 11th, which is pretty soon. It'll only cost 20 bucks, and it's an Oculus Store exclusive, but it does look great. The price, however, may reflect that it may be a short experience, but 20 bucks isn't that much to drop on a good game if it leaves you with a lasting impression. We'll have to see. Speaking of exciting games, Zenith, or Zenith, a new VR MMORPG, has had an info drop recently, and it's definitely gotten my attention. Supposedly taking an anime art style and using a combat style similar to Contra Strike, a game these guys have already published, using a combat style similar to something like Beat Saber. The details and development on this one seems really early on, but I'll definitely be keeping my eyes out. If you're like me and grew up playing Halo, to this day, I can say I'm still a bit of a Halo fanboy. Currently, there's a Halo event traveling the US, and at the event, there's an exclusive VR multiplayer game like Paintball and Rec Room, but it's obviously in the Halo universe. Using real world locomotion, you could move around and shoot, but come on, just let me use a thumbstick and put this on my PC, please. I want to punch some elites with an oddball in VR. Does look cool either way, but still, bring it to PC. And one more bit of news, and if you follow this channel, you already know full well, almost everyone's indexes have shipped, so if you ordered one, check your email, and if not, well, you're that much closer to being able to order one. And now, on to Indie Dev Spotlight. Just to make this clear, this is nowhere close to a paid advertisement. I was given this game for free, but I was under zero pressure to ever mention it in a video or really talk about it ever. I'm doing this solely because this game and these developers have something cool and I've watched them struggle a bit with getting more eyes on it, and just because Thrill is very nice, I want to show this game off. This is Star Blazer by the developers Pro2131. Now, along with Halo, I also grew up loving StarCraft, Command & Conquer, Age of Empires, I just really like RTS games. And I didn't know how much fun and how well an RTS would work in VR until, well, I tried one. This kind of has like a 4K RTS style and it's a blast. What really got me to do this is these guys just dropped the price of the game all the way down to 5 bucks. So if you're interested in a VR RTS game, go check out their Steam store in the description. I'll also put a link to their Discord in case you want to ask more questions. And make sure you let them know that Thrill sent you. And there's the news for the week. I'll be back here, same time, same place, next Tuesday. And I would love Love to see you around as well. Make sure to like this video if you want more of it, subscribe if you need it, and hit that bell if you just can't live without it. Much love guys.